Hello, this is Father Randy Sly with another installment of Day by Day, where each day we take a look at a reading from Holy Scripture found in the Daily Mass. And today is Thursday after Ash Wednesday. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, The Son of Man must suffer greatly and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed, and the third day be raised. Then he said to all, If anyone wishes to come after me, he must deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. For whoever wishes to save his life will lose it. But whoever wishes or whoever loses his life for my sake will save it. What profit is there for one to gain the whole world, yet lose or forfeit himself? The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, we're in the early stages of Lent, what can be called by some people pre-Lent, which are the days that uh, occur between Ash Wednesday and the first Sunday of Lent, which is upcoming. And during this time, as well as the first three weeks of Lent, we uh, have readings from the Synoptic Gospels. And the Synoptic Gospels really give us a glimpse into the life of Jesus. They basically take, him, take us through some of his ethical teachings. They also reveal to him the calls that he has on our life. For example, in today's Gospel, we have the call to discipleship which is taking up our cross daily and following after him. And then after the first three weeks, where we are in the synoptic gospels, for the final weeks of Lent, we find ourselves in John's gospel, and we are basically given uh, a look at the Christological uh, ver uh, versions of the scripture, the Christological uh, and uh, uh, revelations of his divinity that particularly are found in John's gospel. So there's a shift that takes place. And what happens is that, um, as, as some theologians would put it, that we're in a time of compunction. And that word comes from the word puncture. And so what we're doing is in these uh, Christological, or excuse me, in the synoptic passages, we're being given an opportunity to puncture those areas of our life that need to be deflated, those areas of life that have been uh, erected by us that are not really in line with Christ's teachings, in line with Christ's call upon us and upon our lives. And so today he lays down the very basics that we are to take up our cross daily and follow him. And of course, that scripture came with a lot of head scratching at the time of Jesus because at that time, people didn't understand the cross. And as he said um, to them at this point that uh, the Son of Man must suffer greatly, be rejected by the elders, uh, the chief priests and the scribes, and be killed. And that is something that they didn't really understand fully until his crucifixion and resurrection. And so the idea of the cross is more about what they saw on the countryside around Jerusalem and Judea, where the Romans used the cross as a sign of, uh, or as a means of execution, that criminals were crucified on crosses, and they could see these crosses everywhere. It was uh, a part of their everyday scenery as they'd see the crosses. It was a reminder of the, uh, the horrible means of execution used by the Roman government at the time. And yet at that time, then Jesus uses this image already in preparation for his own passion, death, and resurrection, but particularly for his death, that his crucifixion on the cross would be a sign that others would have to take up. That as Jesus died on the cross to redeem us from our old lives, that we too must take up our cross, that we must die daily to the life that we used to live and to live the new life in Christ that, uh, that he has called us to live. So if we desire to save that old life, if we desire to continue to hold on to the old life that is ours before our redemption, 
that we're going to lose the new life that he's given us. But if we choose to lose that old life, if we, if we nail it to the cross, if we just uh, deny that part of life, those prerogatives to enter into sin and concupiscence and the fleshly desires that are there, that he can give us, erect in us, that new life that comes by grace. So here's the invitation. It comes to us as we begin our Lenten journey. The, the uh, invitation to take up our cross is here. Okay, let us now take up our cross and follow him into the things that he wants to teach us through the scriptures as we enter into the, uh, the first section of Lent. And once we come through our compunction and we puncture those desires, we puncture those old ways, we deflate them, we get rid of them. As I said yesterday in the Ash Wednesday one, that we are able to burn it off as like the old dead grass on the prairies of Kansas. Then the new life can be erected in us that comes from God's grace at work in our hearts. So, We're moving through the first set of uh, scriptures in the first weeks of Lent. And then we'll enter into the time where we're reminded of his divinity, who it is that is actually calling us to do this. Again, we're reminded of the basics of who Jesus is as we prepare to remember his passion, death, and resurrection during Easter. So may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts together be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Well, I hope that you'll join us on this journey through Lent on Day by Day and have an opportunity to go through the scriptures together, to seek the the call of Christ for our lives, and then to have him reveal to us in even greater ways who he truly is in us, and through us, and for us. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.